what do you mean by freedom of expression? If you mean that a person can speak what he wishes without hurting anyone, without causing any harm to any community, I believe Islam is not a stumbling block in the freedom of expression. But if you mean freedom of expression is that a person without hesitation, he can abuse anyone, he can criticize anyone, he can blame anyone, then I would say Islam, Islamic fundamentalism is a stumbling block as well as not a stumbling block. Let me clarify my statement. There are various types of freedom of speech. If you say that a person blames anyone, or he criticizes anyone, or he speaks against someone without any proof, without any solid fact, based on falsehood, then I would say Islam, mixed fundamentalism, is definitely a stumbling block in the freedom of expression. Because Quran clearly mentions in Surah Humza, that is chapter number 104, verse number 1, Woe to every kind of scandal monger and backbiter. Again the Quran in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 11 and 12 says, O oh, you who believe, do not defame, do not be sarcastic, do not give offensive nicknames to anyone else. O oh, you who believe, do not spy on one another, do not speak against each other's back, do not backbite. And the Quran continues, Are you willing to have the dead meat of your brother? And the Quran replied, Nay, surely you'll abhor it. What is the meaning that if you backbite, it means you're having the dead meat of your brother? Because it's a double crime. Speaking bad about anyone without any proof itself is a sin. And eating dead meat itself is a sin. And the doctor can testify that if we eat dead meat, you can have several diseases. But speaking false against someone behind the back is double crime. It is as though you're eating the dead meat of your own brother. The cannibals, the cannibals who eat dead meat and who also eat human beings, they don't touch their own brother. So if you backbite, it is as though you're eating the dead meat of your brother. Now some people may say that freedom of speech, if you speak or if you write, does not harm anyone physically. I do agree with them. I do agree with them. But let me tell you, many a times, the mental torture is much more harmful than physical torture. It is much more long-lasting than physical torture. I'd like to give an example. Suppose a teacher picks up a student in the classroom and without any reason, without any solid proof, slaps that small child who's very obedient, who's a very good student. That child will feel the pain of the slap for a few seconds or maybe for a few minutes. But the mental trauma that he was insulted in front of the classroom is much more lasting and much more damaging. Let's take another example. If a teacher without a reason calls that same child in the staff room and slaps him. And take another example that the teacher in front of the classroom abuses that child, abuses that student, calls him a cheat, calls it a fake and all sorts of nonsense. Let me tell you that the second example of the teacher insulting that student, calling him a cheat and giving him offensive name is much more harmful as compared to as slapping him in a small closed room with no one around. So, speech and writing can cause more harm, sometimes, not always, than physical torture. Therefore, it is said that pen is mightier than the sword. Regarding the last type of freedom of expression, that you can blame anyone, you can criticize anyone, with solid facts. Again, they are subdivided into two types. Some facts are meant to be secret, some are not secret. Suppose a government official working in the American government, he tells all the details of the American Army, of the American Navy, of the American Air Force to the enemy. He is speaking the truth, mind you, with proof he is giving you, with photocopies, with photographs, with blueprints, all the secrets of the American government. Do you think the American government will give that person an award? If someone does that to same with the Indian government, do you think the Indian government will give that traitor an award? Will it give a, that person a Bharat Ratna? 
Surely not. It will hold him on trial and punish him. So such type of truth, which are meant to be secret, if revealed, Quran is against. He is called a munafik, a hypocrite. Come to the last time. That can you speak against, can you defame, can you criticize with proof, which is not a secret. Example, a government official in America speaks against the corruption of the government in America. Quran gives them full right. Quran encourages such truth to be told in public against falsehood. Such truth, Quran always agrees. And I started my lecture with ayat from the Quran. I'd like to end it with the same, which says, وَقُلْ جَعَلْ حَقْوَ ذَاكَ الْبَاطِلْ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ ذَهُوكَ وَأُنَزُّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ الشِّفَاءُ رَحْمَةُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَجِدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارَةً Which means, when truth is hurled against falsehood, falsehood perishes. So falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. The Quran was revealed in stages and it's a mercy and healing for the believers. As, as for the people of untruth, it is nothing but loss after loss.